The only thing about them younger Bulldogs is sometimes if the head's full, they might not catch the ear every time. They might move down to a jaw. They might move down or move to a nose. They might drop down to a And you don't want that. You always got to. When, when I'm taking younger dogs, it's all about the dog. And it's all about the training. It, mm-hmm. And I might, I'll control the hog first, but then I'm working on that dog. I'm going to have to break him off or reset him. or It just depends on how they're doing. And sometimes it, you, don't, you don't have to. But, but if something's wrong, I fix it right then and there. It's not, I'm not going to, oh, it's okay, you know, let it slide. That's when, that's when bad habits form. And if you let yourself and let them dogs make bad habits, then that's when they create them. And then they, then they want to know why they're doing it. So a lot of guys don't understand it because you're letting it, you know. I try to fix it right there on the spot and have pretty good luck with it. So I... That's pretty much on how the the younger dogs work. The cur dogs, like I said, takes a lot longer. Right. As far as kind of what I like and kind of get them rolling how I want them. But uh, once they're there, man, you're 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 happy just to see dog work. I, I like I like watching dog work, so it's it's fun for me to see the progress and the the changes and the way they start using their nose after a few hogs under their belt. And, the different ways they carry themselves and how they want to work, how they want to do good and how, how they, uh, how they act in, around a bunch of hogs, how they tend to roll over on their own. Once you start getting something like that, as far as being a natural like that, you, you got something mm-hmm. and you gotta, you gotta kind of keep them going. What is the, the, the most, uh, common misconception about a cur dog? The most common misconception is that they all work. Mm-hmm. No, they don't. Mm-hmm. As far as nowadays, everybody says they have a cur dog nowadays. Mm-hmm. And they, the different bloods and the, and the different stuff that they put in there, it, nothing's bred for nothing. There's only a few people that I know that that breed for ability, best of the best. Um, and I'm one of them. And some other guys might breed. A lot of these guys I don't deal with at all. Some guys might breed for looks. Some guys might breed for the bloodline, paperwork. Same thing on a bulldog. Right? It's, it's, I don't care how you, how you cut it and slice it. Mm-hmm. It's a, uh, it's the same thing. If, if, if you got such and such on this bloodline top side and you got such and such on this bloodline on her bottom side, oh man, what, you know, they asking a thousand questions. Regardless of whether the dogs are proven or not, or daddy and mama proven, or the grandparents proven, what is this dog produced? You know, that's just kind of the way I see it. The misconception is, is that they, a lot of people breed for the wrong purposes Mm -hmm. and i think that's that's pretty aggravating to me sometimes and it's and i know my my game dog buddies they it 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 eats them up because they breed best to the best they breed to a producer that produces you know champions produces you know workers you know using good using dog that's that's what they breed and you're not going to get any kind of results, positive results, just breeding for the color of a dog or for a paperwork. You know, it's just, you're not, it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. You, you might get lucky. I'll tell you that you might get lucky. Right. But a lot of, a lot of these guys that have been hunting for years um, and been using dogs for years and been in the game for years, they're, they they'll tell you the same thing. They're not they they breed best of the best. That's that's pretty much how a lot of stuff was made. Mm-hmm. And sometimes best of the best seven, eight, ten generations ago didn't look good on paper. But they produce so good now, mm-hmm. the four or five gen, seven, six, seven gen now, that's all that's all it's all line bread. Because it was so good 
that they bred best of the best. So they just started breeding brothers and sisters, um, brothers and half sisters, you know, just the same family. Mm-hmm. And that's how you get all these hybrid, highfalutin dogs nowadays. What would you say the biggest misconception about the uh, the game bred dogs is? Same. 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 Mm-hmm. That that they're bred for. They're bred. They're bred. I don't care how you slice it. They're they're all the paperwork. Those guys look at that first. And as far as paying big money for dogs that are just bred with names on them, um. Man, I, I still and I and I do like you said, like I said a while ago that they might breed because they match in color or they're or they're uh, such and such or whatever is out of oh his grandpa's this or whatever. No, you gotta, you still gotta breed best of the best. And they might be kin. They're gonna be kin somewhere down the line. The way I do it, they're gonna be kin somewhere down the line. The same families. But I'm not going to breed anything that's not proven right. at all, mm-hmm. whatsoever. I can't do that to myself. I, I couldn't do that to different people. Mm-hmm. Um, because nowadays, like I said, the, these guys, all they're worried about is the paperwork. A lot of guys that I deal with don't even have paperwork on a lot. They know the, the bloodline and, and the registry. But that, that's, that's not important to them. Mm-hmm. You know? And that's kind of, I do just because for kennel purposes, yes, all of mine are registered. Yes, I I do have paperwork on everything, but that's just for kennel purposes. These, these other guys, some of these game dog guys, they could care less about a, a paperwork, mm-hmm. you know, the, and, and when they breed them, they're keeping all the puppies anyway, so. It really don't matter. It's hard to get inside how they really, really, the mastermind behind all that is, I mean, it's, those guys think a lot different. They, it's future, future is what they're thinking about. Mm-hmm. And it's cool. I mean, I, I do the same thing, but I, I don't, I'm not to that extreme. Like I said, I, I use my dogs for hunting purposes and, that's pretty much what those what what I do, and, and there's a lot of there's a lot of people that still misconception the the game bred dog is is to be mean, um, uh, aggressive, you know the whole you know what I mean the mm-hmm. whole the whole works as far as a bad name, but mm-hmm. I uh, I don't see it, I, I don't see it. It's all how you bring them up still. You'll have some hotter than others for dang sure, but it's all how you bring them up. Mm-hmm. Big believer in that. As far as as far as cur dogs, I've there's been a lot of younger cats that have came and gone through uh, through me. That's it's the, the most frustrating part about it, man. Is that is that for one, they think they know everything, and I don't. And I dang sure don't know everything. And I don't tend. I don't preach to know everything, but I've been around. I've paid attention a lot. And it, and as far as whenever you try and help them, like you said, like wanting to breed, you know, they have maybe they, maybe they have a good dog, maybe they have two good dogs, but still just wanting to breed for that for that look or that or that color or just. They still do it. I mean, it's just, and it's frustrating because he might, he might have one good dog. Oh, well, my little buddy over here has got another. Oh, he, she's a pretty yellow dog too. I think we're going to breed her. Why? You know, for, for, for what? Mm-hmm. You know, they just, that whole deal is those guys want too fast and they're, they're not patient. And as far as game dogs go, there's, there's, no youngsters that that I deal with at all um and if they was to get in to the game game bed dogs I'd I'd definitely just 
try and just tell them, man, just li- listen to what people tell you. Listen to what the folks got to say. Mm-hmm. I mean, because you can, you can do things the wrong way and you can do things the right way. And that's one thing that, that I'm really big on. I want, I want, I don't like for someone to call me, hey, uh, Oh, I don't. I don't think this dog is gonna make it. Well, the first thing you're saying is why, you know, and that's that's exactly what they're gonna run into because, you know, if you if you don't spend the time and do it right and try to make your program the best program it can be, at the end of the day, if 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 you're questioning what you're doing, then it's 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 not gonna be right. Mm-hmm. You got to stay hooked. You got to. It's it's a long process i mean i'm I'm feeding 38 dogs right now Mm -hmm. and it's 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 every day you know you hear every day we we can't go to we go we can't go take my little girl out during the weekend i gotta line somebody up to you know feed all these suckers you know for two days and and all that stuff i mean we just there's some things you, you do without but it just depends on it how bad you want it or not if they were serious about it, I'd dang sure try and help anybody. I try to help anybody, but mm. it just depends on if they want to listen, man. Some, like I said about the cur dog deal and hunting, and I've had young guys come around here and there, but they hear what they want to hear at the end of the day. Right. Biggest challenge. I say the biggest challenge is as far as not right now. I mean, I got two gyps bred right now. That the challenge will be when that when everything's starting to have pups. Mm-hmm. That's whenever it gets kind of hectic and it gets kind of where you gotta. And like I said, thank God for my wife because that's. I dang sure couldn't do everything without her. Um, she, you know, you checking on them two or three times a day and um, just making sure that the mamas are not laying on them. I mean, just, it's just constant. You're just constantly, constantly, constantly looking, looking. And then, and these two, the, the worst thing about it is these two are first time mamas. So who knows how they're going to act. They might flip out. They might be very good moms i mean mm-hmm. we, we always hope for the best but the challenge is is when the puppies come because two litters at a time that, that's that's pretty rough <laughs> and just recently had a two litter you know at a time kind of deal mm-hmm. and um yeah that sucked i mean thank god it was during the winter time because mm-hmm. There's never a good time. It's either hot or it's cold down here. One of the two. <laughs> so it, there's it, the challenges is having too many puppies at one time. I think and mm-hmm. thank God, like my other, my cur puppies, they're they're older now, or you know, not so much tedious attention. But but it's when them it's when them mama start having babies is when it's crunch time for a cur dog. What do you think is the ideal height, weight, and structure? What are you looking for? Or is it just all about workability? Cur dog, that's a hard one because it's it should be all about workability mm-hmm. to me, I think. Um, I, uh, I really, the dogs that I breed, the males are usually around 50 pounds. Mm-hmm. Um, little leg to them um the females tend to be 35 45 45ers um just all gas no no quit just but that's just kind of common in a cur dog uh bulldogs my males are chain weight anywhere from anywhere from 50 to 64 pounds just depending, I don't really like a big, big dog. Um, I take that back. I think Buddha's about, yeah, Buddha's about 64, 65. And the females, they're roughly anywhere from 35 to 45. Mm-hmm. And all these females are, that are on my yard are pretty similar and pretty uh, common as far as 
height, build, and weight. Um, like I said, it's me. I think it's you know I can put I can put a male over one big male over over a, a small female, but I, I really I kind of try to be consistent with the the size of the dog. It's when I'm breed them. If I find if it, she's a little bit smaller, I'm gonna breed her to a little bit smaller male at first. You know, I'm not gonna try to kill her by any means. But the idea, man, is your catch dog, you're you're one that you can hold your own is around a fifty five pounder, man. He's that's as solid as they come. Mm-hmm. And they're always bulkier than a cur dog for dang sure. But but uh my cur dogs don't stay very fat. They I don't I don't like them very fat. I feed them good feed out so I don't have to feed them a whole lot. Mm-hmm. But I don't uh I don't like a fat dog. I, I won't I just they need to be able to move around and not get so hot on me. <clears throat> My puppies get fed regular, uh, either Victor or Diamond Puppy Chow twice a day, once in the morning and once in the evening. They'll get, I'm feeding four pups, Bulldog pups right now. They'll get, they'll get probably a, a cup and a half in the morning and a cup and a half in the evening. Um, my bigger, my older, bigger dogs, they'll all get fed. They get fed once in the evening, every day. They'll get fed probably two cups once a, once a day. I don't, I don't overfeed, but I feed good food, so they don't, I don't need much. I think I like the puppy child fur puppies. That's what they're for. It's what it's for, mm-hmm. and. Um, I don't stop feeding them puppy chow until they're about six, seven, eight months old. Then I'll start mixing the big dog food with them. Mm -hmm. And then I'll kind of slowly bring them into that full big dog food um, stage when they're about a year old. My bulldogs are so athletic. Mm -hmm. They're so light on their feet. They're, they're, They're just, they all think that they're just, I mean, everybody... And that's another misconception. Just big fat slobs that just go in there and waddle in there and catch a hog. There ain't nothing. There ain't no waddling about these. They're 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 athletes. They're they're uh. I mean, they're just they're fast. They're 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 quick. They I mean they they can move on a drop of a hat. I mean they're, they're anything. What a cur dog can do, these bulldogs can do. I promise you. Mm-hmm. Except for fighting hog. But I'm talking about mobility and moving around right. and agility and agility the cur dogs i got i breed they and i like it because they got a lot of lung to them and uh when i say that i mean they, they don't get as hot as fast or, or mm-hmm. like some other dog get tired as quick or mm-hmm. whatever um and i i like that and then different traits as far as throwing it in a bulldog too like this dog might have a trait that that this dog's lacking, but they're both really, really awesome dogs. You're you're gonna put all of them combined in one. I mean, that's that's kind of pretty much what you what you want to do, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, there's there's no way there's I don't think there's anybody that wouldn't do it. Mm-hmm. Why 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 don't you want um, why don't you want the the best of both worlds, you know? Right. The, the way I see it, I mean, every, everybody wants a, everybody wants a good dog, so mm-hmm. make one. Right. But that's yeah. The, the, as far as the the size and everything, and athletic ability and all that, it's 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 the same. It's like I said, these these bulldogs are just as much athletes, if not more than. And a lot of these cur dogs. Mm-hmm. Well, everybody down here from the south, they they know pretty much know what I'm talking about as far as uh, how humid and hot, trying to having to hunt in the middle of the middle of the night, 
and all that stuff just mm-hmm. kind of uh, mosquitoes are terrible mm-hmm. summertime when it rains a bunch um, rattlesnakes everywhere all that good stuff yeah. uh, thorns thorns in every bush pretty much I was hunted worse spots I mean there's some places like some places with more cactus than others, some places not, just depending on where you go. But yeah, the, the everything like they said, everything got a thorn on it down here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Can you talk about the gear that you use on your dogs and Yeah, they're all I got a lot of I got a guy that I get a guy in Florida. Swamp dog makes makes my vest for me custom and uh i get my garment protectors from him as well and i love them i I mean the as far as the uh the flexibility the the lightness the uh able able to him to move around a buddy a couple of buddies of mine from louisiana told me about him and and uh, i've had some before Ended up giving him a call, and his he just he's helpful. He'll answer the phone. Um, something's not right. He'll fix it. And uh, I like it because they're not thick. They're not bulky. They're, the the dogs can still move. They're just pretty much uh, what you want. Everything of mine don't hit the ground without a tracking collar. Uh, I run. I run all that. I run the alpha, the new system. I mean, I, I mean, hell, things come a long ways since right. before with the old beep beep system. That's for sure. <laughs> but as far as yeah, as far as that, like I said, the bulldogs they they all get vests and protectors and stuff like that. They're all try to take care of them. They're all protected. My mentors in the game, it had to be. Well, honestly, and and there's a there's a lot of bulldog guys that I listen to. Don't get me wrong, my friends. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as hunting wise, I get more out of listening to. Well, we have these talks and then just usually whenever we're hunting by ourselves it's probably like i might sound uh everybody has that 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 one buddy or whatever that Mm -hmm. that y'all usually talk about the stuff the right way Mm -hmm. and he's he's pretty much we have talks serious talks sometimes he can get serious as far as i think Every time we do, we hash out some stuff that's that's really real. And uh, if I have a question, I I'll ask him. And if uh, if it's about hunting and stuff like that, mm-hmm. um, it has to be probably probably one of my good buddies. And um, as far as bulldogs go, there's a couple of there's a couple of guys that that I'll ask. Um, that they've that they've been around a while and, mm-hmm. and know know the game, and uh, they're pretty they're pretty truthful with me as far as the serious side. Because there's a lot of cats that won't do that for you. They they don't want they 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 don't want you getting up or hand on their game. You know, it's just the the game dog world is so. I hate to say it, but it is it's bad. I mean. It's, it's it's pretty tough out there. Mm-hmm. That's why everybody's so mad all the time over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've noticed. But that. Yeah. yeah, you don't you don't get you don't get from so the hunting guys they're you know the cur dog guys a bunch of good old boys that that just like to hunt you know and yes everybody thinks that they have the best dogs and. And and they have their own right to think that because they they put in time and they put in a lot of work and all that stuff, 
but they all got their one person that that they that helped them that they remember that they talked to mm-hmm. and and I, and that's <clears throat> and for me that's one of my, my buddies that that I go hunting with all the time on a regular mm-hmm. and uh, and we've had the luxury of, of that's where the cur dog line came from was from his family and we've had the luxury of having starting out with a lot of better stuff than a lot of other guys would dream to have, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of why we still, we still see eye to eye and we, and we, we have the same interest and the same goals and, and, um, our kids go hunting with us together. And I mean, it's just kind of just trying to get the best lined up for them, you know? But as far as that goes, yeah, it's, I'd rather deal with the cur dog side of it than, than game dog right. side of that any day of the week as mm-hmm. far as asking stuff like that. Mm-hmm. What's your uh, morning and evening routine with your dogs? What does that look like? In the mornings, the puppies get fed around daylight and uh, they'll get fresh water. And if I, depending on how I feel that morning, deciding to wash the kennels out or not, and then uh, everything else gets checked. And then after that, in the evening time, it's uh, letting puppies out to play and fresh water and uh, and getting ready to feed and all the supplements and vitamins and get, just getting everything ready for for the big dogs. And as far as if there's females checking them and, you know, making sure something's not in heat that you missed or, you know, stuff like that. And and, and as far as that goes, we as a family, my wife and my little, we all, we're all out there. We all, we all know what, you know, usually what we're doing and what we're going to do and who's doing what. And that really helps because it makes it makes cuts down feed from an hour to 30 minutes. That's for sure. Supplement side is the biggest deal. I don't want to get into too much of what I do with my curves or my bulldogs. It's just that I, I don't like what well, my wife does it and my little girl can't, but I, as far as if I got to administer something, medicine or, or some kind of supplement or, or anything, I, I try to do it myself. So the certain dogs that got to have that done too is uh, usually the ones that I deal with. Mm-hmm. My chain spots get raked pretty much every other day. Um, fresh water when mm-hmm. it's cold. I'm in the process of getting some new houses. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd like to get some some better better house. Everybody's got barrels, you know, and, and uh that's all well and good, but but uh, as far as I want things uniform, um, something bigger. This last freeze, man, it was it was it was rough on on every a lot of things. And I ain't saying it just like nothing. We thank God, you know, we didn't lose dang, we didn't lose anything. But man, that that freeze. That was hard on a lot of animals. Yeah, you guys aren't used to that kind of temperature, and Mm-mm. you're not nothing's built for it down there. No. Right, right. So I was after that kind of opened my eyes, and I was kind of looking into some more insulated mm-hmm. housing for the ones that are on the chains. Um, obviously, the ones in the kennels. I mean, hell, we we hate them every day. We we you know hay wood chip just blanketed i mean we did we did what we could before we went to bed for dang sure um but yeah it makes you makes you want to think about what else to give that's for sure mm-hmm. that, well i think i have the two best breeds on my yard right now mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Well, cur- cur- dog and game red but i think dang good question what looks cool to me, and I like it, and I'm not a, and I'm not a, by any means, a little dog guy, but mm-hmm. I'd like to have some of those little Jack Terriers and 
those little crazy, like some one a little bigger than them, maybe like some Patterdells or some Jack Terriers or, and just hunt with a whole bunch of them. That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. They know no quit. They're rough. I think they're cool dogs. They, they got that little man syndrome and, uh, they're mad at everything. And like I said, my, my wife's Jack Russell's are right along that line. So mm -hmm. <laughs> they're, they're rough, but, I think I, I like their attitude. I like uh, I like their no, no bull attitude, mm -hmm. and I think that'd be that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, most but I dang sure don't want a yard for them, man. I, <laughs> I, I tell you, I, I, I bet you that'd be crazy. Cause I just because I, I like the energy, like yeah. I, I like the, I like the energy they put off. Like I said, um, they're versatile and they're some of the smartest curs I've been around. Mm -hmm. Um, man, I, I, I can't say they can't do anything because I, I, I would never say that because it's all in the, it's all in what you want to show them. And I was so impressed with them, that one pup that I sent up the country to, to be a blood dog, to start on, on deer. Um, that little sucker at three or four months old, loading up in a truck, front seat. Um, taking blood track, taking fake fake blood track, taking drags, uh, putting something at the end of it, working his nose so good that I was man, I was I was really really happy with uh, and I'm really happy with the way that that he's raising that dog. I, I know the guy obviously he's a he's a friend of mine that mm -hmm. we go hunting with sometimes up up there with in uh on a big game ranch and he's just. That's what. If a man wants to do that, I I'd recommend him being the only dog, or maybe the other dog, not having a lot of dogs. Because if you show them a lot of attention and you tell them what you want them to do, and everything's repetitious, the sky's the limit. Honestly, yeah, the sky's the limit because they're 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 so versatile and they're so smart that I I can't. Uh, I can't say that they're not, they won't be good for anything. And they're fast. They're, like you said, they're, they're, uh, legier dogs or they can, they can probably do anything if you, if you show them. That breeding that I did, it, that's why I kept all the females. It was just, that was probably, well, that obviously that was her last litter, but, um, that was probably I was more excited about that than than some of the previous letters that she had had, just because of the of the way we had did that cross and the way. Uh, I mean, she has the puppies inside; so they, they don't go outside until they're four or five weeks. I mean, they just everything was right about that litter, mm -hmm. and a lot of that has to, like I said, I wouldn't put a dog in a situation with a man with a bunch of dogs. Unless that they're going for hogs or cows or something like that. But if you show one on one attention, you, you, you got your dog. Out of the ashes.